वेलकम अगेन टू द क्रैश कोर्स ऑन एनर्जी बाय द एनर्जी क्लब आई आई बॉम्बे सो वी मूविंग इनटू द पार्ट थ्री ऑफ द सोनार थर्मल मॉड्यूल यो विल बी बेसिकली डिस्कसिंग अबाउट रियली वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ सोलर एनर्जी सो लेट्स मूव ऑन एंड कंटिन्यू विद द सेम लेट्स बिगिन विद टॉकिंग अबाउट एनर्जी रिक्वायरमेंट इन आवर हाउस होल्ड सो एज दिस पाइ चार्ट शोस द अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी रिक्वायरमेंट इन आवर हाउस होल्ड Uh, it shows 31% is required for space heating, and then 12% of the energy required in a household uh, is for water heating, and then 12% again uh, is required for you know for space cooling. So approximately, as we see, majority you know 50% of the energy goes in you know space cooling, space uh, heating, and maybe house uh, water heating purposes like that. So we have already seen the heating aspects of solar energy. So that's all the heating aspect, the space heating aspects, the passive houses, if you remember. Uh, then we had also seen uh, the water heating aspects uh, in the part two. Now coming uh, on to cooling. Yeah, solar energy can be used in cooling, and it's a really very interesting application. And that too, there are many ways we can do that. So first, talking about solar absorption cooling. So what exactly happens here is, so there is the ambient air uh, which comes into the system of the solar cooling system, and that air cools and goes out as you know the cold air. So basically, this is done by a refrigerant which is used. So what exactly? So what exactly is a refrigerant? Refrigerant is a liquid or a fluid. which is used to you know which has higher retentivity of you know which can stay cool for a long time so hence it can make ambient warm air into cool so what exactly how exactly it works is the refrigerant gets evaporated due to the ambient warm air which is coming thus the warm air gets cooled and goes out to the room this evaporated air uh, is absorbed by an absorbent liquid uh, which is then fed into another you know system or a storage tank uh, in that storage tank uh, warm you know the warm uh, water from the solar collector comes in uh, this heats uh, the uh, absorbent and uh, the you know the refrigerant fluid together uh, and this uh, thus you know the uh, solar hot water which is coming from the solar collector is cooled and then again goes back to the system so this this is another system so the uh, refrigerant and the absorbent absorbent is cooled and then it is again condensed the, you know the uh, refrigerant evaporates and is then condensed in a you know condensing pipe and then it, it's again reused uh, for the water cooling you know the room cooling system so as we see it has three systems basically number one the warm air and the cold air system of the room second we have the refrigerant system and third we have the solar heating system which you know uh, helps the uh, refrigerant to evaporate once more and get separated from the absorbent so this is the working principle of the solar absorption cooling system now uh, talking about the substances used uh, we have uh, lithium bromide libr uh, used as absorbent we have water which could be used as absorbent talking about refrigerant h2o is used as uh, refrigerant then ammonia is again used as very commonly used as an refrigerant So uh, the second mechanism of solar cooling is solar desiccant cooling. So to explain that, uh, there's a video which I'll play. Over 50% of the greenhouse gas emissions you produce in your home are generated by heating, air conditioning, and hot water. In other words, keeping your home warm in winter, cool in summer, with nice hot water on tap, is emitting two and a half to five tons of greenhouse gas emissions each year. It also contributes a hefty amount to your electricity bill, between 50 to 60 percent. CSIRO has invented a new solar air conditioning system for Australian homes. This technology solution will reduce Australia's emissions, reduce your energy bills, and reduce our demand for electricity and gas. If every home in Australia installed our solar cooling technology, it would be the equivalent of saving 15 megatons of CO2 or taking 3.5 million cars off the road. 
CSIRO's solar air conditioning is an innovative three-in-one technology that provides hot water, cooling and heating. It uses only a fraction of the electricity of current systems and halves greenhouse gas emissions. The process begins with a typical solar hot water system. Water is heated by solar panels and stored in the hot water tank. This solar hot water can then be used throughout the home, reducing the need for gas or electricity. A portion of the hot water is diverted into CSIRO's new solar air conditioning unit, which is divided into two compartments. The hot water enters a heat exchanger in the first compartment of the unit. Similar to a car radiator, the heat exchanger uses the hot water to heat outside air that has been drawn into the first compartment through the vent. At the same time, outside air is also being drawn into the second compartment into a desiccant wheel. The desiccant wheel is the most critical part of the system. It is used to dry out the air before it goes into the house. Slowly turning, the desiccant material in the wheel continuously absorbs moisture in the second compartment. And then the absorbent material dries out in the first compartment. The desiccant material is dried out using the hot dry air generated by the heat exchanger. This air is then exhausted outside the home. The dry air from the desiccant wheel flows through an indirect evaporative cooler which creates a stream of cool dry air. This cool, dry air is then fed into the home in order to cool down the rooms. In winter, the solar heated air can be used directly to warm the house. CSIRO's solar cooling system is a low emissions alternative to conventional air conditioning and gas or electric powered heating, providing more comfortable homes, reduced energy bills and a cooler planet. Now coming to the industrial aspect and the use of solar thermal energy in industries. So we have solar thermal power. So basically like any other power plant, the main objective of this power plant is to produce electricity. Talking about the components of this power plant, it's very similar to the water harvesting, water heating system. So we have the concentrators, we have the storage system, we have the boilers to provide additional energy, we have the you know connected system. Additional to this, we also have a heat, uh, you know, uh, a heat engine which converts uh, the you know heat energy from the fluid to the uh, mechanical energy, which in turn turns, which in turn turns turbines to produce uh, electricity. So let's see the working mechanism of a solar thermal power plant. Concentrated solar power produces electricity from the heat from the sun's rays. It's an effective source of large-scale energy production. Firstly, a solar farm is made up of heliostats. These are computer-controlled mirrors which follow the movement of the sun in order to best reflect its rays towards a central point throughout the day. Heliostats can be positioned individually, take up little space on the ground, and adapt to the shape of the terrain without requiring heavy foundation work. The farms can include from several hundred to several thousand heliostats, which communicate with each other over Wi-Fi in order to optimize their yield. The tower is located in the center of the field of heliostats. On top of this tower is the boiler. The sun rays, reflected by the mirrors, focus on the receiver and make it possible to achieve heats high enough to turn water into steam. The pressure from this water vapor drives a turbine connected to a generator, producing electricity. Clearly, the natural limits of solar power as an energy source lie in its intermittence. When the sun sets, right when demand is highest, the plant is no longer producing electricity. That's when the capacity and quality of storage make all the difference. GE has taken all that to the next level by offering technology with a molten salt central receiver. These molten salts are a fluid containing chemical components whose thermal properties are of particular interest. The cold molten salts stored in a tank at the base of the tower are pumped up to the top where they're heated to a very high temperature. Then they go down to a second tank where they're stored 
They can then store this energy to maintain electricity production for several hours after sunset. When they're needed, within a few minutes, the hot molten salts are sent to a steam generator to activate the turbine and generate electricity. Once the hot molten salts have been used, they're cool enough to be returned to the cold molten salts for reuse in a new cycle. Molten salts make it possible to store heat and therefore energy. They make the plant operational day and night up to 24 hours a day. This concentrated solar power plant using molten salts relies on GE's decades of experience in electricity production and in solar thermal power, its unique know-how in the field of steam turbines and boilers, as well as its expertise in systems integration. It produces clean and reliable energy while optimizing costs and providing the operator with greater flexibility. So here is another video which describes the process of energy production solar thermal uh, energy, in the power. Also called Have solar it. thermal power is a renewable energy that uses the heat of the sun to produce clean electricity on a large scale. Unlike photovoltaic technology, which uses light energy from the sun captured by solar cells, solar thermal technology uses the sun's heat to warm a fluid, produce steam and generate electricity in a conventional thermal process. We must not confuse the thermal energy that is used to generate electricity on a large scale with solar thermal low temperature energy, which is used for heating or hot water. There are several technologies to produce thermal energy. In parabolic trough technology, these mirrors are used to reflect and concentrate solar radiation onto a pipe located in the focal line. Inside the tube, a thermal fluid is heated to nearly 400 degrees Celsius. Then, in an exchanger, transfers its heat to the water stored there and transforms it into steam. The steam drives a turbine connected to a generator to produce electricity. Then the steam is cooled down to start the process again. Central tower technology concentrates the radiation at a point and requires no fluid circulating in the solar field. These facilities have a field of heliostats, flat mirrors, that reflect the radiation onto a central tower with heat exchanger located at the top, away from the mirrors. The mirrors can be oriented according to the position of the sun. With this technique, temperatures of 600 degrees Celsius are reached. Betting on renewable energies like solar in its different technological variants certainly is a very effective way to curb greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuels that cause climate change due to global warming. So now, before we end this session, I'll play a video to actually give you an experience of how and solar thermal power plant is. So have a look. The problem with renewable energy is the lack of continuous supply. Solar power only when it's sunny, wind power only when it's windy, and wave power when the sea's not too rough. I'm Russell Beard and I've come to South Spain to visit Gemma Solar, the first solar tower or power station that can produce electricity 24 hours a day. But in order to get a real sense of the scale of this place, I need to get a little bit higher. Samuel! Samuel, my heart is in my mouth a little bit, but it's incredible. And I can't believe I'm flying this plane. So Sam just spotted the tower up ahead, so he said just point at the tower and carry on. Okay, here is Gemma Solar. You can see it just below us now. Thousands of these heliostats, these revolving mirrors. It's just amazing. Feels like we're looking into the future. Photovoltaic is like one of the fastest growing energy sources in the world at the moment. But these aren't photovoltaics, are they? No, not at all. They are yeah. not photovoltaics at all. So these Those are, just... are just glass, are mirrors. And they are reflecting the light on top of the tower. The reflected sunlight from the 2,650 heliostats combined can generate enough electricity to power 25,000 homes, but only if they're all pointing in exactly the right spot. Santiago's brought along one of these miniature parabolic mirrors, which I guess is almost like a perfect scale model of, of your solar tower. Yes, I mean, the tower looks like in the middle of a circle of heliostats. 
And every yellow stat is like, yeah, taking a different angle to reflect the light on top of the tower and then to concentrate all the energy on, on a single spot. So let me try, let me try. <laughs> Go. Yeah, it's oh, going, it's going. Oh, wow, you can see it catching fire. Almost. It's so sensitive, like one tiny degree out and it stops burning. I mean, this must be the challenge that you're facing. Exactly, I mean, exactly what we have to be doing. I mean, we have to be very precise in moving the aerostats in the right position to concentrate the light there. Sunlight is reflected from each heliostat onto a central receiver at the top of the tower. Sodium and potassium nitrate salts are pumped from the cold salts tank up to the receiver where they absorb the concentrated solar thermal energy, reaching temperatures of up to 565 degrees. The heated salts are then pumped down to the hot salts tank where they can be stored in a molten state or used to generate electricity via the heat engine. This is the hot molten salt tank that contains the molten salts at 565 degrees. This is like a big battery, but it's a thermal battery. It's not an electrical battery. In fact, the energy which is accumulated here is enough to continue operating the turbine for 15 hours at full speed. So this is what distinguishes this place from other solar tower exactly. generators around the world. It's actually that storage. Exactly. Being able to store energy this way means the solar power can, for the first time, be provided 24 hours a day, not just when the sun's shining. This is the vessel in which the water became steam. Inside you have water at maybe 500 degrees centigrade and already 100 bars of pressure. This is incredible. So what Santiago is telling us is, despite how futuristic this all looks, the actual business end where they create the electricity is much the same as any other coal-fired or even nuclear power plant. It's a steam-driven power plant. Wow. Wow. This is what I'm talking about. Now this looks like a power station. And it is. So this technology has been around for hundreds of years. We are going to be reducing our costs, but also due to the fact that the oil prices are going up will make it impossible to burn gas to produce electricity. And then our plants will continue to be delivering cheap and clean energy to our children, let's say. So that was it in the module of solar thermal energy. Hope you enjoyed this module. Thanks a lot.